Welcome to this tutorial on how to set up the NVIDIA Virtual GPU License Server. We're going to guide you through the entire installation from downloading the required components to testing its functionality. A License Server can run on Windows or Linux. As you can see, I've got a Windows machine up and running already. This can be a virtual machine or a physical machine if need be. It's fully patched and has the correct hypervisor tools installed. I've configured this VM with two virtual CPUs and eight gig of RAM. This should be fine for most deployments. You can scale this up if needed. For instance, four virtual CPUs and 16 gig of RAM is enough to handle up to 150,000 clients. In terms of disk space, I've made sure I have a few gigabytes of disk space free. The license server database itself will rarely need more than one gig of space in production. I'm using Windows 10, but also Server 2012, 2016 and 2019 are supported, as well as Red Hat, CentOS and Ubuntu on the Linux side. We won't be installing the license server on Linux in this video. Also, make sure that your license server has a static IP address and that the MAC address of the network card is static too. Licenses are bound to the MAC address of the license server itself, so make sure it doesn't change. Also be aware of this fact if you're ever restoring a license server from backup. So the first thing we need to do is download and install Java. You can use Oracle's Java Runtime or you can use the Open JDK. The Oracle JRE is now chargeable, so for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use the Open JDK. I'm going to use the link in the license server documentation to download OpenJDK and I'm going to select 1.8 MSI version. I recommend that you use the link in the documentation to download Java to make sure you're using a supported version. I've also put a bunch of links in the video description below to help you out. So after installing Java and accepting the defaults, we just need to do a few things. Firstly, check to make sure that the machine doesn't have any active virus scanner running. This can cause the installation to fail. Secondly, we need to add a few Java path details. Don't skip these steps because they will come back to bite you later when you try to install the license server. If we type advanced system settings into the start menu and go to environment variables, we now have a few tasks to do. The first thing we need to do is to find out the path of your Java installation. In our case, it was here. We now need to add this path to a system variable called Java home. When you enter this path, be careful that you don't have any training characters in this path, such as a backslash or a space. Also, check that the path to Java is in the system's path command. In this case, this was added for us already during the Java installation. OK, so now we're ready to install the license server itself. Go to the software download section in the licensing portal and choose additional software. Be sure to choose the latest license manager available from the drop down box. Once you've downloaded the file, unzip it and click on the installation program, accepting all of the defaults during the installation process. If you want to do any advanced configuration, like controlling access to the management web pages, or maybe creating a highly available pair of licensed servers, check out the main documentation links below. So now that we've finished installing the licensed server, let's do some basic checks to make sure it's running correctly. You'll see a couple of new services running. Firstly, the Apache service will be running, which allows you to administer the licensed server. Secondly, there's the service called FlexNet License Server. Both of these services should be running at this point. You can enable access to this VM to manage your licenses from another PC, but let's just log in locally to the License Server Management screen to check that everything is up. As you can see, we now have access to the License Server's management interface. 
If you want to check how the installation went, browse to this directory for the log file. If you want to do some more general troubleshooting in the future and maybe debug some connection issues, the main log files for you to look at are here. Also, another top tip to make sure that the license server is listening on the default port number of 7070 is to use this URL to check. You can also use this URL from another VM doing troubleshooting to make sure the VM can communicate with the license server. So now that the license server is up, we need to install a license on it. First, we need to download the licensing bin file from the NVIDIA portal. You'll see that we already have our license server registered in our licensing portal and licenses allocated to it. This was covered in our video on how to get an evaluation license. Click download and I'm just going to save the license files onto the local desktop. From the license server UI, go to the license management tab and select the bin file you downloaded. As you can see, that installed successfully. And if you go to the License Feature Usage tab, you'll see we have our 128 evaluation licenses for virtual apps and for Quadro VDWS. Also worth noting is that if you're evaluating virtual PC, then the VDWS license covers you for that too. So that's it. We now have a running license server. We're now ready to move across to the next step which is to install the NVIDIA Virtual GPU Manager software onto your hypervisor. This is covered in our next tutorial.